Hello there and welcome to the first, the very, very first room tour on this channel. Now, for a thousand subs, I did say that I'd show you basically everything Lego in this room. And there are some things that I've never shown before on camera, especially the messier stuff that I don't think you'll necessarily want to see. So we'll start with the familiar stuff behind me. I've done a few videos recently on stuff like this Smith's display, so I'll only cover them very, very briefly. But anything that I think is worth mentioning, we'll definitely be delving into more detail. And starting off with the scene that you are familiar with, you can see my flash in the box just there. But we do have these drawers that store most of my Lego pieces. I still think it's about 60, 40 between these and the drawers we'll look at soon. But these are just regular home base tool bit drawers and screw drawers. They come with a very nice divider in the middle, which just allows me to split certain pieces. And even the big ones at the bottom have that divider in the middle. You can see where I've got these wedge places at the front and then the underside ones at the back for the most part. But it did get to a point where, well, initially I think I only had one of these for common parts I was using, like the 1x2, 1x4 plates, but then I got a total of five and still didn't have enough space, so I chose to expand downwards and got these B and Q drawers. I can't remember the names of them. If you do want any of this stuff, let me know and I'll drop links in the description. Of course, they won't be affiliated unless B&Q and Homebase do want to sponsor this video in any way, in which case be sure to drop me an email because I'll definitely be down for some more of these units. But I also have these older storage boxes which are divided up into eight. They're sort of outdated now and I'm slowly shifting the stuff from there into my second drawer unit. But there's some things you've already heard of. What you don't know is I've got a little ship collection down here that really i should be breaking up we've got the old republic ship that i rebuilt this year we've got my midi scale venator using the old venator playset which i'd love to see someone make a star destroyer with the new star destroyer playset because they would look great next to each other and also a desert skiff that i built last year for return of the jedi's anniversary it's more or less the set but i've just modified the base that it's built on and I was going to build a little skiff set mock for it. As the anniversary has been and gone, I'll probably tear it apart at some point. But for some reason, I just haven't got round to breaking down these three sets. You can also see there is another tub here. These are all my printed parts. This is just a sweet tub. I think I picked it up in B&M or somewhere like that. Full of sweets, ate the sweets, washed it out a few times. And now it's just home to all my printed pieces. So you can get a better look there. I've got all the eyes and round ones together, all the one by ones are together, and on top I have one of my latest mock building tools. So this hammer was 3D printed by me, it's not my design, but it uses two brick separators encased in this nice green PLA. I've got some bolts holding it together just to keep it secure, and I didn't want to glue it so I can eventually get the brick separators out without harming them and a TPU tip, and that is just for hammering down quite literally some of the bricks. So when I was working on my bongo mock here, which is still in progress, you can get a sneak peek at the next update. Instead of trying to press down all the plates and hurting my thumbs and everything, all I do is give it a few taps just to make sure they're down securely. And especially when building a mock, it allows you to not have any gaps between any of the bricks. I also have my old pick a brick cup, they're now outdated, you can't even use these in store, they won't accept the barcodes, they'll get you to empty it into a box just to make sure you're not getting too much value for your money I guess, because some of the smaller parts, they're definitely better in the cup, but that sums up most of my storage, but you can see there is a shelving system down here on the left, in fact this is what I used to use for my diorama mocks, until I started printing my own, you can see I do have a spare one there in green. And I have a light, actually I didn't mention the light that's up here. So if we take a look back next to the drawers, I do have a light here for when it gets dark, it just lights up any of these drawers that I'm using. And I can pull it off just to double check I'm using the right colors because some of the blacks, dark blues, dark greens and even dark red and reddish brown get very confusing when it's dark. So I do have a light there and you can actually see 
I have some of my dioramas towered there. I think that's all of the ones I have built. I've got the bottom one, which is the duel on Naboo, duel of the fates, where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are facing off against Maul. And that does have a 25th anniversary plaque. It would have been lovely to get one for the Phantom Menace, but the general Lego Star Wars one will do. I then have my mock Isley, my Moss Isley Cantina build into a diorama. This is using all the pieces from, well, not all of the pieces, but all the pieces here are from the Master Builders set, which technically isn't a UCS set, but it's expensive enough to be combined under that bracket. We then have the recent Tantive playset, which I've also made a diorama of. And on top of that, the Dark Trooper attack, which I still want to improve at some point. So for now, I'm leaving it built. We also have two brick heads either side. We have the llama, the official Lego Minecraft llama. And then behind it, the pudsy one I built, custom for children in need. Speaking of custom brick heads, I do have an Omega here from my Bad Batch mock series that I'm building one every week. Now it's over. I've got one final week this week and then I'm not sure if I'll do a showcase. I'll probably just feature them in that last video. And then we've also got the Valentine Bear across. And before we get to the Brickheads over here, I have been very distracted. Let's go back down to this shelf because I have a few other tools, mainly cleaning. And right at the bottom, we have all of my stickered bricks that I've removed the stickers from and still need to clean. If you remember that video, first off, thanks for still supporting this channel. And also, that was a while ago, so I'm not sure many of you will. I have one of my spare boxes and a giant boat brick that just doesn't fit in any of the drawers. I then have broken pieces, some capes. I think them two boxes at the back are filled with heads and helmets. And that pick a brick box is filled with just giant pieces like the Sonic ball and ramp that I don't really fit anywhere else. Now, in terms of cleaning, I have a lint roller, which I use mainly for my desk, but this is an absolute steal. And for any Lego fans out there that are struggling to clean or de-dust their Lego, I will leave an affiliate link for this down in the description. In fact, I'll probably wipe this top. This is the best cleaner, not this brand necessarily, but this is a keyboard cleaner. It's advertised for keyboards, cars, vents, and stuff like that. It's so easy to use on Lego. Mine's getting a bit dirty, so I'll probably have to replace mine. But all you do is, it's a gel. If you're not good with slime, it's not too slimy, but it's definitely the same consistency. And you'll just plop this on your Lego. It gets between all the different cracks and for instance, these grill pieces here, it will clean the dust out of them quite easily. In fact, recently we have dusted the Disney castle. So I'll show you how clean that is when it comes to it. The last thing over here is just down the side. I have my wand from the Harry Potter make and take from last September, which I've still got built. I don't necessarily need the parts. It's quite a nice build. So I've got no intention of taking it down anytime soon. Now taking a look back up at my minifigures again. This has been recently featured on the channel. I'm a big fan of that Smith's display and it does light up. I can light it up for you, in fact, as we take a look at the brick heads here. And you can see we have a Marvel one, a few Star Wars ones, a few Disney ones, because I'm a big Star Wars fan. My fiance is a big Disney fan. So it makes sense that they're the ones we are collecting. You can see the display does light up and shows off all of my CMFs that I've got, including the licensed ones at the bottom. You can see Simpsons, there's Muppets, Lego Movie, and of course, Looney Tunes, which we had to complete our series of. Most recently, we've got these space ones top right, and if you do want to close up at all of them, definitely check out the video. The only CMFs that are missing from this are the Disney ones, which you can see stitched right at the top of the castle there, all over this castle. So. Let's see if we can not miss any out. I know Stitch is at the top. We then have Tiana just to the left. There's a King Louis somewhere back there. So hopefully you can see him as well as all the other Disney characters down towards the front here. Mickey, Minnie, we've got Aurora from the recent Disney mini dolls poly bag. We've got Daffy and Daisy Duck just there. We also have Asha, I believe her name is. I think I got it wrong in the last video. And the star from Wish just up top here. You can see Mickey to the left, Jack and Sally at the back there, Hercules and Hades just there. And I think that is everyone. Oh, and of course, Tinkerbell just at the top here. We saw her, but I didn't point her out. 
And as I said, I did use the gel to clean the Disney castle. It was looking a bit dusty. And now it looks not only bluer than ever, but also very, very shiny. So it does work wonders. We got the up house next to it as well. And you saw BD1. It really does complete the display, just having the up house next to it, because it shows how big the castle actually is. And I don't know if I can get it all in frame from this angle. But as I said, BD1 is next to the castle. The only buildable droid we have that might change with the droid car. It does look pretty cool. And I definitely want to pick myself up a cheaper R2 at some point. But it's not too high on my priority list, if I'm honest. You've seen the chessboard. That is a previous video as well. So definitely head to my channel and just search for Star Wars chess, for instance, to find any of these videos. It's quite straightforward how I name them. So it's easier to find. This is my fiance's Lego Harry Potter collection. You can see Hedwig and the Hungarian Horn Tower at the top. Very, very good builds. I noticed that the new group that Lego are coming out with also has a similar feature to these where it can dance as the lever is spun at the back. So that is really cool that they're continuing that. We also have the stag, which honestly I think is one of the best Harry Potter builds they have done. I'm really, really a big fan of that. And Dobby and his sock, book and cake. We have a few different WoW and Sea Creature builds down here. I definitely think that WoW looks like the Purgil, I think it is, from Star Wars. And then the Hogwarts Express with the mini Hogwarts Express. You can see, not only have I added a custom smoke tower coming out of the big Hogwarts Express, but I've also mirrored it for the little advent calendar build. These advent calendar builds are really, really cool. And then you all probably know about by now the Harry and Voldemort dueling in front of the Hogwarts Express. And for any Harry Potter fans, this is my fiance's collection of Harry Potter minifigures. I don't know if I can get a good shot from over here, but there is definitely, definitely a lot. You can see a lot of Rons, a lot of Harrys, and even a few Hermione's in there. But of course, they all have their different outfits. And whilst we're here, this is my fiance's terrarium. I know it's not quite Lego, but there is a load of leaves there. It's definitely taking in all the sunlight it can. And this pretty much sits against a open window, which has the sun blaring through all day. And before you start worrying about the Lego, I've had my Lego like this for years in front of a window. As long as there's no direct sunlight on the Lego, even through a window, I wouldn't chance it. The Lego turns out to be OK, so don't get too worried about the Lego discoloring. And of course, this unit does have the whole wall protecting the inside, which you've seen a million times. I don't think this has changed since the last few times I have shown it. This is the Harry Potter section. I still want to do something with the castle here. Perhaps we'll modify it and make it look like the actual Hogwarts from the outside. Having a turntable on here and to be able to turn it around would be really, really cool. And then we have a few other Harry Potter sets, the Ravenclaw banner back there. We have Hagrid's hut, which I definitely want to build a little house for Fang, but we don't even have a Fang minifigure. So I have to pick up a Fang and also build him a little hut just to merge the two Hagrid huts together. We have four Privet Drive and this is looking like the start of a winter village. So I'd love for a little wintery scene in here for Hogsmeade. I think that'd look really cool. Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft needs a bit of, well, it just needs a bit of attention, really. We've got this nice little diorama just down to the corner here. And then the rest of it is just, well, actually, no, the actual little house does look really cool. You've got a few sets, like the fox looks all right where it is, but I just need to connect them all together. And I've just been enjoying building Star Wars mocks at the minute. So there will be an update. Hopefully I'll get a lot more done than I initially planned for the next update because well, I've got these base plates over to the left now, so that'll fill up most of the back, but you'll have to wait and see for that. We also have the Lego City, which is coming along nicely, but again, I've just been building a lot of Star Wars mocks recently, and especially taking on the giant mock project. There's not much that I've done to the city since, well, I don't think I've done anything since the last video. I am working on an Injago floor above that, and by working, I mean at some point I will actually put bricks together, but I am planning it out still. So the city isn't finished with. We will complete that tower. And then I'm thinking of tearing down the food one. We already have the central perk calf. We don't need two restaurants too close. So I might 
get rid of that tower and build a Star Wars themed one because there are so many rooms. I mean, you've got the Emperor's throne room. You've also got the Emperor's room on Coruscant, his Senate room where he has all the meetings. And well, basically this is just becoming a Palpatine tower at this point. But I'd love to get some more Star Wars in the city and perhaps have a few like TIE fighter cars and X-wing cars driving around because I think that would look pretty cool and that would put my own twist on it. I do also have a few Lego things just down here. You can see the anniversary key ring just at the back being held by Boba Fett. We've got some Lego Hot Wheels. That was a really fun video. And then we have the Lego bricks that I painted and my fiance painted too for my birthday this year, as well as my Bad Batch Funkos and all of my Ahsoka ones. You can tell I'm a big fan of the animated show. I also have some Black Series if you are interested, just Kenobi, Raver, and also a Dark Lord of the Sith, Jar Jar Binks, because I had to take the cape from Kenobi. I pretty much just bought Kenobi for that cape for Jar Jar and use Reva's spare lightsabers as his own. And now that is pretty much all of the Lego this side of the room. But before we switch over, I've got to show off my Star Wars minifigures from this angle. I really do love this angle for them. Seeing all of my mini, well, most of my minifigures, no clones, troopers, a few clones, I see a clone just there. But most of my clone troopers, stormtroopers, and the unnamed minifigures are in a separate location I will show you later. And I've got all of the Astromex lined along the side, which I think looks pretty cool until you get to R2 without his head that I stole for Anakin's ETA interceptor. But I have to replace that and I've even included Plankton's droid body just at the back with some of my R2 legs. And perhaps Plankton might even make a cameo in one of my future mocks. But all these minifigures are a mix of official LEGO ones. There's some customs like my Cal Kestis there. You know what, I'll post a short on how to make this cow because I think we are getting a cow in an anniversary Imperial Star Destroyer set. So this cow doesn't look too different from that whatsoever. It uses Mando's torso and there'll be a short coming out. So make sure you stay tuned for that all the way up to the sequels, including my custom Ahsoka minifigures, which probably are some of the better customs I've made. Thrawn can definitely use a new face, but Thrawn would have been an amazing minifigure to come with the Star Destroyer. I'm sure I'll touch on that at a later point, but let's have a look at my desk wall. So as I said, this is what you'd normally see, but when I am editing, I still have a lot of Lego on this side of the room. You can see it starts off with Rebel ships. We've got the X-Wing, the A-Wing. We've also got last year's May 4th X-Wing, which was based on the UCS set that came out last year. And also this year's TIE Interceptor Polybag based off this year's UCS set. So they are really cool and I'll probably end up keeping them on display. But then we have a minifigure scout interceptor built using the 2020 TIE Fighter model. The, well, my first TIE Fighter set, the 2012 model. And also Vader's TIE Advance built using the recent TIE Bomber. Instructions for that are up on Rebrickable if you're interested in building that. And... Of course, got to have the pose with Vader on top from Rebels. That is not only iconic, but looks really cool. We then have a modified Boba Fett Starship from the 20th anniversary one in 2019. And I've turned that into Django Slave 1. We have an ATTE Walker, pretty much unchanged, much like the gunship and the fighter tank. But this Bad Batch Marauder shuttle has been modified to fit a few more minifigures inside. Once again, there are videos on reviews for all of these sets as well as the Bad Batch modification and even Vader's Advance has his own video. And I have a few more Rebrickable models but first off I have a non-Star Wars area. Not explicitly non-Star Wars. Star Wars is allowed but it's where all my other sets go such as the T-Rex skull, my Sonic diorama. I've kept the flower gift we purchased on this shelf and I also have my ideas hand which you can still go and support so once again, I'll leave that link somewhere in the description with the rest. We also have all the seasonal builds, literally all four of them built. The Halloween and Christmas are just round the side, but whilst it's a bit sunny up, we kept the Valentine Lovebirds and the Easter Bunnies built. I then have a few 3D printing projects out the front as well as my Mario Kart. I've got my custom Mario Karts to the left and then the official Lego Go-Karts on the right, which are very, very similar to mine. 
and this cute little penguin build because why not? I just like the penguin, really. I also have a few custom minifigures of me and my fiance. The top ones are ones we built at the Builder Minifigure Station. And then I also have my old profile photo, the version of me as a Jedi with the completely wrong colored hair. And then me and my fiance built as Harry Potter students in our respective houses, her in Ravenclaw and myself in Gryffindor. Now going across to all of these builds, we have the another 2019 set for the 20th anniversary of LEGO. We have Anakin's Pod Racer, which is from The Phantom Menace. It was the 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars and 20th anniversary of The Phantom Menace set. And it's really, really cool. It's also, fun fact, minifigure scale. So that helped me when I was making most of these sets into minifigure scale, such as Han and Luke's Land Speeder. We've also got the smaller version of the minifigure scale tri-droid there. We've got a minifigure scale small sentry at the back, minifigure scale fang fighter. Yeah, you know their minifigure scale. We've also got Kenobi and Anakin's Delta, the ETA, an Endor speeder, Mando speeder, and also a minifigure scale V-Wing. That's the most recent addition to the collection from the Bad Batch. And we have a few more May 4th builds, Yoda, Leia, and Vader, which I did share on Instagram. So if you do want to find out about a few other things that I do that I don't include in YouTube, the best way is to follow me over on Instagram. Now, I am a big fan of Clone Wars. I'm not sure what exactly would give it away. I don't know if it's the droid sets, the clone sets, or the giant Captain Rex on my desk, but I do have nearly every single clone Lego I've made on the side here, as well as a few of my own customs. You can see I've turned the 332nd Troopers into their own specialist unit here, just using a 332nd Battle Pack, as well as the 501st Specialist Battle Pack. So they look very, very nice together because it's just a simple change of helmet. We also have the 2020 Jetpack Trooper, the Jump Trooper, I think they're called in Star Wars, as well as Vaughn, Fives, Cody, Fox, and a 212th, a 187th, and a Coruscant Guard Trooper. The plain Phase 2 Clone Troopers just beneath the Coruscant Guard. We've got a Gunner out to the side and a 187th Airborne Trooper. And I do actually have another custom, which is Wilco here from the Bad Batch, who was ultimately shot by a Rampart and fell to his demise after refusing to cover up the Batch's return. As I said, I am missing two minifigures. One of them is Captain Rex. So I decided to, when I got the helmet, build him a body. And now I have a massive Captain Rex minifigure. I can almost guarantee my Captain Rex minifigure is bigger than yours because Look at the size of it. I mean, that's it compared to a few normal figures behind it. I don't know the exact minifigure scale of this. I don't know how it scales to the minifigures, but it's got to be at least 10 times. I have to size this up at some point. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that post. I also have my very first Lego set here that I got just over 15 years ago with two of the original clone troopers in it. And I've even got the official stickers on the side. I didn't keep them. One of the stickers I still had from when I built this when I was young, but one of them had worn off. So I did end up buying that sticker on Bricklink. I also have my modified 501st battle pack. You can see the ATRT Walker and the Bark Speeder are built just using that set. And I do believe both of these instructions are on Rebrickable if you're interested in building either one. And then my most popular Rebrickable mock is this clone bark speeder with the sidecar. It's built using the swamp speeder from the 332nd battle pack. And so far it's got me over 6,000 views. So thank you for all the support on that across YouTube and Rebrickable. And I think I'll definitely be revisiting it soon and seeing if I can improve it in any way. I also have this custom printed minifigure, which official Lego parts as with all of the others, you can see that he's standing on a master moldy brick and has that cool printed torso with master moldy on as well as a double sided blue lightsaber. So he sits on my monitor stand, which is a bit closer to my desk than my other minifigures on the shelf. But I guess you'll probably see him in most of my videos. I've also got the AAT poly bag, which I have built using Lego Hyo's instructions into another swamp speeder because 
I have actually grown to really like that battle pack. I know it's not minifigure scout in any way, shape or form, but that would be a great video to do at some point. How many battle packs do you think it would take to make it minifigure scout? It's like four times the size of the battle pack. I also have both of the droid carriers I have reviewed again in a previous video. You can see there's a B2 and a droidica pilot in the old one because I have used the minifigures again from my childhood to build the new May 4th gift with purchase because there was no way I was spending £145 just to get this ship. And we also have another, I think it's either a small spider droid or crab droid. I think it's the little spider droid which came with the 8TTE and I think this one isn't far off minifigure scale. It's a little on the larger size but it's a pretty cool model. Now I do have the 8080 on the desk as well and whilst I haven't quite shown you the interior since we tried to fit all of the clones in I can give you a sneak peek because I've actually mounted some of the troops to the side just so we can fit a ton more in. So let me know if you'd like to see a bit more into there. And again, I have made that half speeder at the back there, minifigure scale. It's basically just a recoloring of the Endor one. I also have a Boba and the Stormtrooper helmet on my desk, which they're just nice to look at while I'm working. And that monitor is... Well, how old is that monitor? It must be about 12 years old. I've had this monitor forever and I actually bought another one at uni that ended up breaking and then I bought one just before we moved that pretty much broke about after a month whilst we were moving. So this monitor has done me well. It's a Samsung curved monitor, nothing special about it and it definitely needs an upgrade soon, but I also have this awesome Star Wars mat on my desk, which I don't think I'm parting with anytime soon. I'd love for a Lego one. I think it would fit a bit more with the channel, but I do like the fact that you're getting a whole load of the original six movies represented, even some from Rogue One. I think we have Solo and some Clone Wars characters on here as well. And then under my desk, I have this keyboard tray so I can get all my electronics out of the way when I'm building Lego. And speaking of getting them out of the way, my cup that I originally had for my videos, a big tall red one, actually broke the other day. So I am using this coffee flask, but it's just water inside because that's basically all I drink. Underneath the desk, I do have my Lego head and that is full of a bunch of my minifigures that aren't in the city and dashed around and I have a bag of the bigger parts like the power miners wheels and the moss isley domes you can see there but that is pretty much everything there is to see i guess i've still got an unopened super mario poly bag on the whiteboard there i didn't open it when i was building the set and i probably should have because I don't really know when that'll be open, but I'll probably open it up and review it in a short later on this year. So definitely be sure to drop a like on this video if you've made it this far and subscribe for more awesome Lego reviews, Star Wars mocks, and just a lot of awesome content coming your way. Thank you all so much for helping me hit this massive milestone. 1000 is crazy, but I'm loving your energy in the comics. 10K, 100K million, here we come. So be sure you do hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you've hit subscribe, don't hit it again unless you're going to hit it a third time to resubscribe. And as always, may the bricks be with you.